what you're looking at is what I believe to be the best budget EDC blade out there. Um, hello everyone, we're out in the woods today and I wanted to go over my Buck Vantage Select. Uh, this is a larger model, a little bit about this knife. It is manufactured in the United States and comes in at a price of right around uh, $38 on Amazon. Um, I will leave the link in below, a link below if you guys are interested in picking up this knife. Uh, now the reason I say this is the bu best budget EDC blade is because this kind of combines uh, design excellence with um, affordable engineering and materials and kind of the confluence of those is where this knife lies giving you, you know, I think best value uh, for your buck here so um, I've owned this knife for about three years now and I've been extremely happy with it uh, we'll go over some of the features and I can speak from experience to its durability um, I've been carrying it almost every day exclusively for the past uh, three years so just looking at this knife to start out here we will be looking at the blade um, there's an excellent drop point design. I think aesthetically this is a great looking blade. Uh, on the tip here we have a nice fine tip for some close in work. And on top we can see it's still plenty thick enough to be able to um, you know, be durable enough. I haven't had any issues with this knife blade you know, rolling or the tip breaking off or anything like that. Um, as far as the blade here, we have a nice belly and a nice flat section here. Um, we will also see this kind of points down a little bit. I believe that's for when you're cutting rope or something like that. Um, that it will, you know, your rope will cut and slide up this way as compared to sliding in this little gap between the handle uh, and the blade itself. Uh, the blade in this material is where we will see kind of the, uh, the back and forth between um, affordable materials and uh, you know, good design. Uh, this blade is made of 420 stainless steel. Uh, now, uh, I know 420 stainless steel isn't considered a uh, premium steel by any means, uh, but it definitely is adequate. I've, I've used plenty of blades with it. Um, I know a lot of Leatherman's blades do come with 420. Um, and especially with uh, the special Bose heat treatment that Buck offers, um, this definitely can squeeze out all the performance out of the 420 blade. Um, and the big thing about this is that maybe you have to sharpen a little bit more. Um, I've only had to sharpen this a few times because I do strop it on my leather strop um, regularly to kind of keep that edge in good shape so I don't have to take it to the stone. But to be honest, uh, even if you have to sharpen it a little bit more, I mean, most of us are really using these knives for uh, opening packages, opening up letters, uh, maybe some light food processing. So do we really need a super premium steel to do that? Not really, uh, I don't think so especially when you could save a few bucks and uh, you know, buy something that's a uh, quality design like this. Um, also here we can kind of see the back and forth between quality and uh, price point knife is on the grind here. Now this is a hollow ground knife um, and it is very thin. It's hard to show on camera, but you can see it's very thin uh, here. Uh, and it does come to a nice um, fat spine to help with uh, you know, processing food and splitting things when you need to. Um, but you can see there's these grind marks on here. Um, you know, they didn't go to another pass to uh, you know smooth out those grind marks and make it more like the satin finish we see up here and on the spine. Um, not a big deal. It's not rough. You can't really feel it, and it doesn't really affect the functionality of the blade at all. Um, it's just more of an aesthetic thing. Uh, and if we could save some money there uh, and get a more affordable blade, then I'm all for it. So I don't really need uh, you know a nice smooth. Um, finish there. Moving on to the handle here, this is a uh, injection molded nylon, uh, plastic type material. Um, it's been extremely durable, um, but they have admitted or they haven't used a G10 or a micarta or something like that. That would uh, definitely add to the cost. Now this has been, like I said, extremely durable over these three years and that's definitely added by this excellent pocket clip, which we will get into later. Uh, but uh, this has definitely been adequate. I haven't had any issues with it. If we can save a few bucks there and have a more affordable material, uh, I'm, I'm definitely fine with that. As far as design here, we have a nice tapered design here with the thumb ramp and then uh, this uh, kind of narrows here where you have the flipper. Uh, also here we have um, beveled kind of edges where your, uh, you know, your pointer finger would go. And then the flipper here also acts to help lock your hand in to that knife. 
Moving back here, we can kind of see this curves a little bit and it does fill the hand very well. Um, I do have large hands, so I would like it to be just slightly longer, uh, but it's definitely plenty adequate for um, almost all EDC tasks. So you gotta keep in mind, this is an EDC blade. This isn't a defensive blade or anything like that. Um, when you look at the scales here, uh, you can see there's just a simple design. Like I said, this is an injection molded plastic. So a uh, simpler design, a simpler die, definitely is going to add to the cost savings and then not going through like a laser stippling or something like that um, is definitely going to reduce the cost while still having an excellent handle design that definitely gives you plenty of purchase. Now, I would like a little bit more traction, uh, but these, these marks here, uh, they do give a pretty solid grip. Um, I'd like more traction, but I haven't had an issue with holding onto the knife even when I'm sweaty and my hands are wet and things like that. Also onto ergonomics, um, there is no jimping on here. We do have that nice thumb ramp, which definitely helps lock the blade in. Um, although jimping is a nice feature to have, uh, definitely a way we can get back down to that uh, affordable price point for an American manufactured knife. And, and I know I'm talking about a lot of things that are, um, you know, price point considerations, uh, but that by no means does that mean I think this is a bad blade. Um, I really think it being able to cut out things you don't need um, to help get a more affordable product out there is, is actually a great choice. Not, you know, not trying to be disparaging or anything like that against the, the knife. That being said, uh, moving on here to the pocket clip. This is probably the nicest feature of the blade. And just for the very reason that, look how deep that is. Um, you know, when you put this blade in your pocket, all you see is the pocket clip. And there's this nice buck logo on it. Uh, there is this uh, cutout here, which uh, is nice as well. and just takes up a little bit of weight. Not that I think that's a huge, huge deal with this knife. It's not excessively heavy or anything like that. Um, now this uh, pocket clip here, it is reversible and removable. Um, you will have these, I believe, Torx screws. Um, maybe, I think these are Torx. They, they kind of look like a fill, or, um, an Allen key type design on the camera, but I believe those are Torx. Either way, it doesn't come with the tool, so you'll be responsible for uh, finding that tool if you want to remove it or flip that around. Um, also, you have a tip-up design which is excellent for one-handed uh, use, for opening and for removing from your pockets. Uh, I don't know why more manufacturers don't make uh, super deep pocket clips and tip-up design. It doesn't cost anything and it really helps with um, retention in the pocket. For example, this is uh, another EDC item of mine, a Leatherman Wingman. And you can see, I know with a Leatherman, it's hard to get that super deep pocket clip because you have a lot of moving parts involved. But, you know, the pocket clip goes to about here. You have this much sticking out of the uh, tool. And this definitely falls out of my pocket and it gets caught on things a lot more than this does just due to that excellent pocket clip here. The one thing that I will say is a downside to this is that I would like this angle to be a little bit less steep. Um, I don't think you need this quite as steep of an angle to um, slide into your pocket easily. Uh, but that being said, I haven't removed it and adjusted it, so it hasn't been a huge factor for me. Getting to detent and lockup, the detent on this blade is perfect. Um, it's stiff enough to be retained easily, but it's not too stiff that uh, your flipper, which we'll get to later, um, can't overcome. Um, also, we have stainless steel liners here on this liner lock, which... Um, I've been very happy with it's been a very tight lockup. I haven't had any issues at all with lockup on this blade. As far as centering, uh, it's a little bit off center. Um, I'm really not concerned with it. I think people make a lot bigger deal about that than really needs to be made. So moving on here to the flipper, which I mentioned before, as we can see here, this is a, a nice low profile flipper. It is not assisted which is one of those uh, affordable um, kind of considerations that makes this knife at the price point it is. Um, it's just a normal uh, flipper design, completely manually operated uh, without any spring assist or ball bearings or anything like that. Now, as you saw, you can get a somewhat reliable deployment uh, using just the flipper. 
you definitely are going to get better results if you flip and flip use the flipper and flick your wrist um you typically can get better deployments too if you clean your knife regularly and put some oil on it but uh i've been typically been my um experience and after about a week or so you're going to get so much pocket lint and things like that pocket lint and other things in that it's not going to really make a difference um so you're not going to get those super quick reliable deployments like you're going to get with an assisted or with an automatic knife so just keep that in mind being an edc blade i don't think that's an issue but um if you were going to push this into a defensive role that's definitely something that you'd have to consider that being said as well um if you can't get a reliable deployment with the flipper you also have this nice hole here for your thumb uh so if you, you know, deploy it it doesn't open the whole way you can still easily get that one-handed deployment there this thumb hole is uh definitely textured enough that you can get a firm grip on it but not too much of there's sharp edges on it or anything like that and that goes for the whole knife as well there's not really any hot spots on the handle or anything like that it is executed very well especially considering uh the price point of this blade so that's a little bit about the uh the buck vantage select here like i said this is the larger model i've been using it for three years and i've been extremely happy with it um i don't really see any need to venture elsewhere for a quality edc blade so um i'd like you guys to take a take a moment let me know down below if you have a buck vantage or if you're going to go buy one and if you have one if you like it you know what you what your favorite things are about it and what your least favorite things are about it um i'm gonna have more stuff like this coming up here in the future um so please like share comment and subscribe this is resolute outdoors and until the next video guys i'll see you